Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for um, coming to the New Zealand Portrait Gallery to Bukinga Fakata today. Um, I'll just start with a little introduction. So, Tenakoto Kato, Kopri Tokuingwa, Hekai Mahiho, Mo Te Bukinga Fakata, Narera Tenakoto Kato. So, um, I'll begin with a quick little introduction to the award itself, given that it is the inaugural award. Um, it was established for this year, the first year, in connection um, between the New Zealand Portrait Gallery and the Kingitanga. Now, the Kingitanga are the um, Māori sovereignty, um, and they were established in 1858 as a means in which to attempt to come onto some even footing uh, with the colonial powers that they were facing at the time. Now, the first part of the exhibition, you see this incredible red wall here. What we've got here is this really wonderful symbol that you would have seen on all of our um, advertising throughout the Motu, the country. Um, and this was designed by Neil Partington and it's actually a direct uh, inspiration from Te Kingi Tuhetia, um, the current reigning king, his Toko Toko, which we have actually been privileged enough to have just around the corner as well also see just behind here is that we have a whakanoa bowl. Now this bowl is an important part of tikanga, of being in this space. Um, it is for people as they exit to kind of cleanse the weight of being in such a tapu space to become noah, to become mundane again. Wonderful. Now what we'll do is I'll bring us through the first little introductory space. So this exhibition uh, really points to some of the key aspects of the Kingi Tuhetia Portraiture Award. That being an award set up to highlight and uplift emerging Māori artists through their depictions of their tūpuna, their ancestors. Um, there's this key aspect in Te Ao Māori, the Māori worldview called um, Whakapapa. So this is your lineage, where you kind of come from. Um, most of us would have a family tree, and we've actually got a really impressive family tree just through here. So this is a portrait um, of King Itafio, who was the second Māori king. Um, and the, this portrait is painted by Lindauer. And we are extremely grateful that we were able to have this work on display. Um, it's from the Auckland Art Gallery. It is a very beautiful oil painted work of Kingi Tafia, um, and he's got a patu right here, this ceremonial war uh, weapon. Now we've got one of the first kings within the sovereignty leading us through past the um, family tree, I guess, uh, to this wonderful photo of the current reigning king, Kingi Tuhetia. Um, now they are in curated in such a way to almost be in conversation with one another. Um, they're kind of locking eyes and there's that sense of family coming together within a space. Now that toko toko, the walking stick um, that I spoke to briefly, that Neil's design is, is actually right here. A key part of Te Ao Māori is that it was of course not a written culture. Um, everything was presented orally. So if you are wanting to remember your ancestors, to remember your whakapapa, um, you needed to be able to have the stories, have the knowledge kind of just right there in your head to be able to recall back from. Um, and as you go through the generations and have all these impressive stories, it becomes significantly more difficult as you go on to remember everything. Um, so this toko toko is not only a utilitarian object. Uh, King Ituhetia actually uses this as a walking stick to this day. Um, he used it at the opening porphyry where it was ceremoniously gifted to us for this exhibition. But it also acts as a kind of visual and um, textual, like a touch reminder of your ancestry. So we've got representations in a slightly more traditional Māori approach to portraiture of the different Kingi ancestors. Um, we actually have Kingi Tafiao right here, the second figure, with his patu that we saw in the Lindauer. So these are portraits of 
to Kingi to Hetia's ancestors, um, but it's also a very traditional object and it's got a lot of mana, a lot of prestige. So this is the very beginnings of the introduction, kind of uh, prefacing some of these ideas of um, portraiture and whakapapa, so your family tree and uh, your ancestors, your tūpuna. But now we're actually going to enter into the exhibition itself and we're going to check out our 49 inaugural finalists. Now our curators um, of this exhibition were Helen Kedgley and Anna Marie White. Um, and Anna and Helen worked together to try to create a space that worked as a, as a traditional whadanui, a meeting house on a marae might work. So the curation of the space starts with this little introduction, but you're then met by our first work that I'll briefly speak to, um, which is Tessa Williams' uh, finalist entry, um, which is titled Hashtag It's Not About a Tie. So very politically conscious at that point. Um, and this work is actually made entirely out of the Kokowai uh, pigment soil that she has herself uh, taken from a river close to her. Um, she's found this pigment, she's dried it, and then she's placed it within this box. And she has a heitiki, which is that traditional punamu greenstone carved pendant, and she's indented it within the soil. Now, this work um, has been placed at the very beginning because it's meant to represent the whenua, the earth, um, the very grounds upon which Māori and all New Zealanders um, have kind of come from, and of course that we stand on today. Well, reclaimed land, but you know, still. Um, so this is a wonderful kind of intro to represent the land itself, um, and it's uh, also kind of bookended at the very end. The last work that I'll speak to is another representation of that kokowai pigment. Um, we also have David Grace's work just here, this beautiful uh, kahu huruhuru which is a uh, woven cloak. Now this one, you can tell, is meant to be created for a man, a tane, um, and that's because it is this quite like barrel shape and a really good weaver is somebody who is able to wrap it around themselves and create this perfect cylinder, kind of protecting them in that way. Now this figure, um, this tukuna itself, has been placed here um, to represent the kai kororo, which is a key part of being welcomed onto a marae or onto a whare nui. Um, as you enter, you'll be greeted by a speaker from the marae that you are entering into, um, and they will kind of give speeches, calling you in and welcoming you into their place. So there's a lot of thought put into the curation of the exhibition itself and where particular works have been highlighted. Now, the majority of the finalist works have been collected together um, under the pretense of familiar connections. So their iwi, their tribe that they all come from. Um, our first tribe is that of Tainui, which is Kingi Tu Hetio, the Kingi Tonga's iwi itself. Um, and the work that I would first like to speak to is this piece here by Elazar Bramley. It was painted and drawn by Elazar, and it is actually a depiction of Kingi Tafiao. So we had that hyper-traditional approach to portraiture by Linda coming through to another representation of him, still quite detailed, recognizable as a portrait in this way. Um, Elazar also has utilized the kokowai pigment, but she's mixed it um, to create a kind of oil paint here, where she's used these things uh, this iconography to make it look like a uh, playing card. Now, she told me that uh, her intention behind this work uh, came from seeing photographs of Tafia when he tried to go to um, meet Queen Victoria in 1884. Um, and this was due to the fact that a lot of Tainui's lands were actually taken from them during the Waikato Wars. And he wanted to have a meeting with Queen Victoria and try to um, seek reparations in a sense, uh, try to kind of be on the same uh, playing field, I guess. Um, and so what she's done in presenting him as kind of the king card 
She's speaking to that sense of strategy that is really essential to, to our Māori, the Māori worldview. Um, but she's also chosen to depict him with um, pen, yeah, ballpoint pen. And this is because she wanted to highlight the fact that, you know, this wasn't a war of just muskets and swords. It was also a war of speeches and words and how you represented yourself to others. So there's a lot of thought gone into a lot of these works um, and this idea of portraiture. So our next work is actually our inaugural runner up. Um, this is a work titled Survival um, and it is by Te Haunui Tuna. Um, now, as you'll see on our labels, uh, this one is closer, we have artist name, their uh, iwi, title, who the tupuna is, and then the medium itself. What you might notice, but our runner up, is that even though he's placed within Tainui Iwi, um, he does not fuck up up a back to Tainui Iwi. He is Tuho. Um, now, this is actually because this particular ancestor, um, Tamarau Wai Ari, um, was a key figure in helping the Tainui Iwi during the Waikato Wars. He brought his iwi to come and help them to fight for their lands, and then he actually accepted Tainui back to them to be uh, kept safe after they lost them. So there's this wonderful connection and history um, that has been pulled on a lot in this exhibition as well. Wonderful. All right, I will now move us over to our Taranaki iwi space. So as you would have noted, um, we have had one runner-up and quite a few honourable mentions. Um, there were 13 of them um, and the very first one that I will be highlighting today um, is by Ashley McKenna. Um, and I quite like this piece because it is a recognisable approach to portraiture, but I think it kind of pushes the boundaries around that idea of depicting your ancestor, your tupuna, almost in a singular. Um, and that's because Ashley here has layered <laughs> the different aspects of what your ancestor, your tupuna, could be. Um, we have got images uh, taken from historical photography from a particular Marae, um, that he has collaged together, but you'll also notice in the background a quite recognisable mountain, being Mount Taranaki, um, and there is this idea within the Te Ao Māori space that your ancestor does not necessarily need to be an individual or person, you can actually be connected back to a particular landmark. You know, there is a waka that you came to, there is a river that you associate yourself with, or a mountain. Um, and in this case, we have Mount Taranaki, which of course is central to the Taranaki whānui, or the broader Taranaki iwi. Um, in the centre here, we've also got a uh, carving. So kind of layers upon layers, you've got the sense of a carved ancestor depicted within multiple other ancestors on the kind of backdrop of another ancestor there. Um, and Ashley believes that this carving is potentially of Koro Taranaki or Grandfather Taranaki as well. Um, and he was a key part of returning these sculptures back to the Taranaki family and to a museum in that space. So he's a key part of that re patriation of works. Um, the last work in the Taranaki space before we move through and I actually show you our winner is probably one of the most difficult to assess as a portrait um, and it is this interesting work by Jonathan Morrish. Um, Jonathan Morrish, if you couldn't tell, is a architecture student um, and he's actually studying in Wellington at the moment at Victoria University and his approach to the brief being a depiction of your ancestor, uh, your tupuna um, and uh, kind of a portrait is to actually try to depict his own experience um, of being Māori but of being disconnected from his Māori whānau, from his family, from his iwi, his tribe. So what we can see here um, 
is a traditional meeting house with the different trees coming through. But then kind of on the flip side, perhaps on the European side of his ancestry, the trees have been cut down and the house has been removed to be replaced by these very colonial type buildings. And as you go down, you can see this kind of um, destruction of these two sides of where he feels connected to, this European and then the Māori side. Um, I think here is actually referencing Guernica by Picasso. So definitely come in and have a closer look. It's got some of that kind of blocking and the jarring nature of it. Um, but similarly, you've got the sense of kind of the waka that you might fuck up upper back to. Pretty sure this is the bottom of the North Island. Um, but that sense of trees, your family tree, the roots that connect you, they kind of keep this whole space grounded. So in a way, what we're seeing here is not what we might expect from portraiture, but it's actually almost the purest representation of his connection to his ancestors. Um, and in a way that he is keenly engaged with, which is as an architectural student at this point. This work is our inaugural winner. And something that I have noticed as everybody came around here and locked eyes with Nana Pat, that you kind of can't help but smile. Um, and I think that was a huge part behind the choosing of this particular work. Um, a reminder of the brief being, uh, you know, an emerging artist, um, focusing on your ancestry, your tūpuna. Um, this particular uh, individual, Nana Pat, which is his nickname, um, his name is Pat Kingy, is the um, great uncle of Bodhi Friend, who was our inaugural winner. So this is at a time when he'd gone back down to Waikato. Um, he was with his family. They were having a boil up. They were having a really good chat. Um, and he kind of, <laughs> he pulled his uh, Uncle Pat and Anna Pat along and he went, hey, I really want to take your photo. Um, and Pat kind of grumbled. Um, and his wife went, no, 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 you need to have your photo taken. Now, Bodhi was talking with him and learning more about his whakapapa as he was taking this photo here itself. So they were kind of having a korero, a conversation around who they are, where they come from. And he managed to capture this split second moment where he kind of, there's a sense of calm and peace, but also quite a lot of love. There's aroha coming through here. Um, and I think that sense of connection of love is really what drew our uh, judges to choosing this work as the winner. Now, Bodhi is actually a photographer for the Warriors in Auckland. Um, he's never before exhibited in a gallery space. This was the first time that he's ever been in this space as a professional photographer. Um, he told me that when he got in as a finalist, he was like over the moon. And he was like, cool, that's all that I need. I'm very happy to have this. So when we called him up to say, hey, you've won. Um, this is an incredible award and you know, you've won $20,000. He just kind of went, what? <laughs> he really had no clue that he could even be in the running towards winning this. So he's managed to capture this incredible moment of connection and an important part of his life, um, representing his great uncle. I think that's, a pretty incredible artistry in itself. Right, well, I'll get us to kind of perch here briefly and then I'll bring us around to the back of the gallery space. Um, and that's because this wall here is meant to represent um, the moment of being brought into a marae, brought into a whare nui, a meeting house when after all the speeches have been done, um, after all of that very uh, kind of the more masculine side of things, um, women would stand up and they would perform waiata. So um, Anna Marie White and myself, I refer to this as our waiata wall. And that's because as you'll see, it is completely made up of depictions of wahine, of women. And so it's really a sense of kind of highlighting the women of the marae, their important role within that space, um, and the kind of joy or the sorrow that they're able to bring up through Wyatt or through Sol itself. The back gallery space um, is 
largely represented by a far broader approach to iwi. So it's quite easy to connect everybody who whakapapas back to Taranaki Whanui Iwi, the broader Taranaki Iwi, or to Tainui. Um, but through here we have such a diverse um, kind of artists who applied and got through as finalists that you can't really narrow them down to any particular place. So this right hand wall is dedicated to Te Tairawhiti, which is along the east coast or Gisborne. Um, and then in a moment, we'll see the left hand side of the wall, which is dedicated to Te Tai Tokoro, which is up in Northland. Um, so I'm going to speak to, in this space, briefly, um, quite an unassuming work, but it's actually the only work that was submitted by a South Island artist. Um, and she actually happens to be in year 12. So she's only 17 when she submitted and she managed to make it to being a finalist and she flew up with her grandparents. Um, and this particular work is called Tupuna Connections to Kaikoura. Um, and so she's told us a little bit about um, her connection. She feels a lot of connection to her marae, to her kaikoura tupuna um, via her grandmother. Um, and she actually says, and you can read it in the catalog, if you haven't already purchased one, um, that she actually goes surfing just down at the coast, um, just by her marae. And she really loves to be able to kind of look back onto it um, from the ocean. And she has a really strong sense of connection to it. Right, so last artwork along this side is um, the biggest. Kind of hard to miss. This work is actually by the only uh, dual artist submission, um, which is Melissa and Rudy. Um, they're based up in Auckland and they do a whole lot of pretty impressive um, workshops around crocheting. Now, um, this particular work is entirely crocheted by hand and it is then placed onto a polystyrene sculpture. So it's surprisingly light. Um, now this work is obviously meant to represent um, kind of that more traditional visual approach. It does look like a um, aspect of a panel within a, a marae, um, but it's full of color and there are these three words along the bottom here. Um, which is Whakapono, Tumanako and Aroha. Now, when I spoke to Melissa in particular, she told me about the feathers. Um, and for her, and actually for a lot of artists, this sense of connecting to your ancestry is perhaps something that we're not as conscious of within a um, European context. Um, and that's that sense of the kind of spiritual, but also physical connection that you might have to those people who have passed before you. So here she wanted to represent that sense of being able to connect through the heavens almost to those who have gone um, via the use of these feathers. All right, I will speak to our last artist here. This pretty impressive work is two pieces. Um, it is by Faith. And what she's done here is she has created this pretty impressive kōrowai. Um, she's woven this completely by hand. She has composed the waiata that she sings. She has created her entire ensemble. She has then gone and designed the choreography of all of the dance that she does, as well as the videography. She's directed this entire process. And what she's done here is She's captured this really wonderful aspect of Te Ao Māori, of the Māori worldview, which is that depicting your ancestors is not just capturing their face. It's actually a process. It's storytelling. It is recreating the things that they may have created. It is a process, a lived experience. And that's what she's tried to capture in this particular work. Um, and she's become an honorable mention because of it. So obviously, you know, very diverse approach, um, but what she's done is also represent the process itself that led to this final piece. Yeah. 
Okay, and the last one along this wall before we reach our final piece is another one that kind of pushes our expectations of portraiture and is this beautiful work by Nikau Hinden. Now, when we look at this, um, I think some of us might struggle to see a portrait, uh, but I think this one is actually perhaps, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful representations of an ancestor that we have in this space. And that is because Nikau found out the exact moment that her great grandmother was born. And she then charted the stars to find out what the heavens looked like when she took her first breath. And she has represented that in this kind of astral chart on this cloth that she has actually made from hand. But really, what else kind of tells you more about who you are than when you were born, when you first enter into this space? Um, so this is another wonderful example of portraiture being determined in non-traditional ways, but still that sense of connection that can be found within the works themselves. Wonderful. All right. My last work that I'll speak to, and then I'll take any other questions that we might have, is this very precious, uh, Uku clay work. This is another piece that uh, has utilized the kohowai pigment um, alongside the uku or the clay that she used to fire the sculpture. Um, she has gone in uh, with this clay and carved out a representation of one of her wahine, her female ancestors, taken from a photograph that she managed to find. Um, and she's carved in this detail to represent the cloak, which you can kind of see, since it's in the round, flowing out behind her. Um, and you might also see, obviously being careful around the sides, um, there are little kind of circle spots um, around the top. And those are actually meant to be pom-poms. Sorry, going back to that kokowai pigment, she's actually lovingly and almost painstakingly added it all entirely by hand. Just going in and like rubbing in that pigment into all the little grooves that you see here to add that connection to it. Um, Mere is also a emerging artist. This is, I think, the third sculpture that she has ever made out of the uku clay. Um, and it's been this wonderful process. A lot of our artists speak to the process of creating these works and they say, you know, at certain times of the day, I could see her smiling at me. And there's this wonderful connection of really putting this love back into the work. What I particularly like about this work, and not only the fact that it is uku, which is a kind of uh, process of clay sculpture that has kind of seen a renaissance almost. It's just coming back and being used more and more, so we're learning more about it to this day. Um, but also, Mere hand-delivered her ancestor to us. She drove her down in a car on pillows um, for about like eight hours from Auckland. She brought her in um, and she gifted her to us to act as kaitiaki. So we here at the gallery are kaitiaki, we are guardians of these ancestors that we have in this space. This moment is a key one that highlights the importance behind this particular exhibition. Um... Right, well, I think that's everything from me. Thank you everybody for tagging along on this talk. Um, it was really wonderful. And I'll take any questions if we have any.